How's it going, ladies and gentlemen? My name is Ruffle Rowlett, and welcome back to a brand new video. Today, we're going to be taking a look at some massive Pokemon information that you guys may or may not know about, but it is about a possible brand new Nintendo Direct that may feature Pokemon gameplay for Scarlet and Violet. And on top of that, Riddler Koo, a known leaker that some of you guys may not know about, he is an individual that last year for Legends Arceus and BDSP leaked information and gave us riddles that, well, riddled information for these games. And he's now back and he's giving us more info. And of course, we have massive breakdowns to go through, but let's start, first of all, with the upcoming Nintendo Direct, at least the rumors for it. So we start off from here, from Soul Silver Art, a local leak analyst, as I'd like to coin him. But here's what he says. Oh snap, people, uh, the Scarlet Violet region name and map are incoming. First of all, I know Nintendo Directs don't reveal Pokemon news, but this countdown ending in, in the same day as Sword and Shield being showcased at the last year's E3 Treehouse Live makes me think this is definitely happening and the Scarlet Violet promo has begun. So, what is he talking about? Well, let's take a look at this. This right here, um, if you guys don't know about this, basically, what's happening over on the main Pokemon YouTube channel, and again, if you don't know, I'll explain. Basically, every week, they've been posting on the same day every week, this kind of little promo YouTube short video where they show you kind of different regions in Pokemon, but they've been doing it in the right order. So they've been doing Kanto, Johto, Hoenn, Sinnoh, Unova, Kalos, Alo Alola, and then Galar as well. So they've been going in that order, and they've been doing it in the correct manner. But interestingly enough, the next time that one is supposed to drop, well, the last one for Scarlet and Violet, should be around June 29th. And based on all the information a lot of people have been dropping recently, it all matches up very, like, very, very well. For example, even Centro, who, by the way, don't trust Centro. Centro is strange. Uh, sometimes Centro can be correct. Sometimes Centro can be wrong. But usually Centro gets their information from other people. So oftentimes they will cover info from other individuals. But they're also an account that kind of aggregates information. And they said, the next Nintendo Direct is coming on June 29th. This is 100% legit. Now, either he could be messing with us... Uh, which most likely is the case, or he could be serious, which, again, it does match up, as I've said, with what we've been talking about. Even uh, Samus Hunter, which, again, uh, like, this is all goofy, I know, because both of these people are untrustworthy, I'm not gonna lie. They've been correct and incorrect in the past, but here's the, the thing. Both of them are saying, yes, I can confirm it, but expect some news and trailers for already announced games releasing soon on the Switch before that, like the live alive game, I guess, I don't know. But what's being said here is from Go Nintendo saying, rumor, very strong evidence points to Nintendo Direct on June 29th. So everything is pointing towards that. And guess what? On that same day is when that countdown for Scarlet and Violet is happening, or at least we don't know if it is for Scarlet and Violet, but the fact that they're showing every region, and in every region they're also showing the names of the regions, and guess what? We don't know the name of the Scarlet and Violet region. So it only makes sense that they're counting down the region names and showing off some footage of them for the final video to be at the spot, the Scarlet and Violet region itself. And we finally get the name and info. And here's what's being said by Soul Silver. He says, now the OP, the original poster of the countdown, has admitted they messed up uh, counting some of the dates, but the countdown still ends up being on the 28th, 29th of June, give or take. Check out this thread for more time uh, to mark on the calendar. So basically, um, if you look at this, this is the S Sword and Shield actual like release dates for all the trailers that happen. If you look from the top, uh, you have like kind of like, uh, you know, different sort of time frames where everything happens. In June, there was a lot, for example. So at the bottom, you have February 27th, which was the reveal. June 5th in 2019 was when the second trailer happened. So that's the equivalent to our second trailer that we just got with Scarlet and Violet, the most recent one. And the next thingy that was related to these games actually happened on June 11th, very shortly after during a, guess what, Nintendo Direct. We got new info. We got like the Treehouse Live gameplay and all that and a bunch of other stuff revealed. Then adding on top of that, on June 25th, we had, like, the reveal of, a pokes, uh, you know, certain Pokemon. In this case, I think it was Impidimp and Yamper being shown off during a demo gameplay. So, what we're trying to say is Scarlet and Violet most likely going to have a similar promotional cycle in this case. And will be featured during the Direct. Uh, you know, even in this case, he even put this together himself. Like, so Silver said, Treehouse Live? Question mark. It would be so amazing to get that because the Pokemon presents on the second week of June. It would make sense, Nintendo Direct and Treehouse Live right after it, with uh, Scarlet and Violet gameplay in it, on the third week of June. It all fits in perfectly, right? It just kind of just matches up perfectly with what they've done in the past. So, to start off with, this is the big info about when we'll be seeing new news. But now there is bigger information about some of the stuff that will be in these games that you guys may not know about. So, let's jump into that first and foremost. Soul Silver Art says, No need to get much further into this one. Now, what is he referring to here? Well, as I mentioned earlier, Riddler Koo, as I've said previous and multiple times before, is an individual that genuinely has leaked information. This man, I don't know where he gets his info from, but he has actual real leaks. And he's been tweeting out a few different things. For example, he tweeted this, 
calling this stage one of one of his riddles that long, long time ago, my puppy started a journey in the Titan region. And Titan, by the way, is the code name for Scarlet and Violet. That's the code name used in the development of these games. It said that she caught a cool Pokemon, but no one has ever seen it before. A lot of rumors went viral. Someone said she caught a Tapu Koko. To be continued, stage two in three days. And now he does he actually po has posted uh, some of the other stages as well. But what are we talking about here? What is this? Well, this is one of his riddles, and we're trying to break them down what they refer to, because he posted a second one, uh, stage two here, and Another rumor saying she caught a slowpoke came the way. I admit it was intrigued until I received a letter from her. Cried about joining fake Team Rocket. Actually a cosplay brothel, which I don't even know this man is like hinting here. But basically a lot of the words here have been switched out from a real poem, I think, with Pokemon words. And then it continues, and losing her with thing? I don't know what that means. I actually replied, uh, I quickly replied, stay strong, babe. Don't forget your true mission. Which, again, no clue what he's trying to say here. And then he has the final post, which is... Finally, my puppy came back. I asked what spoils she brought back. She dared not look up. Nothing, but... Dot, dot, dot. She bleated. I wanted you to find Taponium Z, but you went to the Titan region. Are you a dumbass? <laughs> Wait for your punishment. Although, she didn't catch a new Pokemon there. Who's... Who's it? Like, who is it, I guess, in this case? And... Pokey Clay here came through and said the following. Koo, I love you and thank you for your generosity, but are you sure this is a common English riddle? And Riddler Koo said, I googled this riddle and it was uh, on the first page. And uh, I don't know, man. I don't know what kind of like English, like, you know, riddle this is or like real common English riddle this is. But sweet mother of God, it is very confusing. Uh, however... As I mentioned, Soul Silver Art seems to have a breakdown on this. So he says, no need to go much further on this one, because JK1351354 99% nailed it. What has a head and a tail but no body? A coin. Also, Ku said to pay attention to the positive and negatives. Uh, what's there and not there. So our object Pokemon is probably a coin. However, this leads to a few more things, which is the following. I am always hesitant at first, so I did what Koo did. What Koo did. Side note, we know uh, he made Google riddles to use for, for his riddles, but when I googled coin and money riddles, nothing came up. I was only until I googled heads and tails riddles, this came up, which also made it, it made a click for me, which uh, basically was the one about what has a head and a tail but no body, which, uh, yeah... A coin, I guess, in this case. And obviously, I heard this riddle before. So what did the, do the coins have? Well, one side is a head and the other side is a tail. But it also has nothing in between the other two sides. But what really sealed it was the eclipse riddle from the other day. I was working on covering it already when I did this. And what is he referring to? Well, I talked about this and I even said this myself that... Something money-related makes sense because Eclipse, another kind of Riddler guy, he's more 50-50. Like, with Riddler Koo, you can trust everything he says as being actually real leaks. Eclipse is a bit more 50-50, though. He has been more correct recently, so we can take what he says as, you know, more likely to be real. But he said this following. He showed this picture, and this featured all the object-based Pokemon. All the Pokemon in that exist in the Pokemon universe that are based on objects. And then he says, here comes the money. Which, obviously, to me, made it feel like, oh, this has got to relate. This has to. Has to, in some way or shape, relate specifically to a money-based Pokemon. Something based on money, whether it be a treasure chest or something else. It has to relate to something like that. It just makes total sense. Because, why would he say that specifically? And here's what he says. Uh, basically, um... When he posted this, he continues on. It's clearly an object Pokemon related to money. In the first trailer, we saw tons of gold and treasure chests, which we all assumed was coming because of the Spanish-Portuguese expedition search for gold and treasure. Connecting with Ku, it could just be a single-stage Pokemon, which most likely is the case. But a coin seems too small, so I feel like it could be two or three stage lines that become a full, full-on treasure chest Pokemon. Again, this is literally what I said in my previous video. This is exactly what I said in my last video. I said exactly the same thing. That it's going to become some kind of treasure chest. Because I do believe it will be a coin you'd find in a long lost treasure. Lastly, I love this theory below. And I got me thinking, if the coin is a different color in a different version. Gold coin for Scarlet, Silver coin Violet. Hinting back to Johto again. As well as the two schools emblems being, if you guys haven't seen them, their arms. Their emblems are gold and silver. Could we have a few more theories to come down the line possibly about this? Which I think, yes, that is the case. If there is a coin based Pokemon or a money based Pokemon. I do think that there might be a version difference between the two games. Games. Again, hinting at this concept of gold and silver, because that's the only two games that I can think of, unless I'm crazy, that have any relationship to anything of like, kind of like that kind of value, right? Like red and blue are just simple colors. Gold and silver are also, you know, they're rare metals, right? It's like the literal like names. I mean, of course, there is like, you know, the, the actual periodic table way of like referring to certain things like whatever, you know what I mean? Like a certain like... Um, 
what you might call them. I don't really know. Different elements and whatnot. But when we're looking at gold and silver, those are the only two that directly also connect to money <laughs> in some way or shape because gold and silver coins were used in the past as a way to actually, you know, pay for things. So they're directly related to money. They re directly re relate to gold and silver. Again, so I do think, personally, I've said this before, that after Sword and Scarlet and Violet are out, that we're going to be getting most likely either a DLC or some something related to Scarlet and Violet again in 2022. But the year after that, in 2023, I think we're going to get be getting some form of a remake of Gold and Silver or Gen 2 remake. So Johto related for a fact. But um, this was said by AKG who says, if that is the case, I want both versions to have different coins respective to the time. So... Actually, I think it makes total sense, right? Having one side have a gold coin, the other side silver coin. It just it just fits really well. But we continue on over to the next post here from uh, Soul Silver, which has to do with another riddle from Riddler Koo, where he says, "Speaking of the waifu Pokemon, he skipped the one I uh, uh, skipped the one he mentioned in this in his poll, but he gave us info on others. Then he gave us a uh, stage one of a riddle on a new object Pokemon. Please don't forget this. The likes of Klefki, Litwick, etc. It's tough. So could we wait for stage two, which is coming in a few hours? Well, we already know what happened with that. We already know now what it's related to if we connect it all together. But again, the whole Tapu Koko thing is still weird to me how that connects to the coin. But based on what again Eclipse has been saying and all these other people have been saying. It all just fits together perfectly, okay? It's all just just perfect. Um, but yeah, like I said, now that we have everything broken down, um, all the things are kind of connected, it does seem like it's a Pokemon based on money, specifically on money. So Tapu Koko is not like relating to a chicken of sorts, I'm guessing. It's all related to it being a treasure chest looking Pokemon just in its design, so to say. But we'll have to wait and see how that turns out down the line. Again, there are different, uh, you know, perspectives on this. For example, people had the idea that it could be a, you know, like one of those uh, cuckoo clocks, you know, like cuckoo, cuckoo, the one that, that pops out, you know what I mean? Could have been one of those because people are speculating that because of, you know, well, Tapu Coco, which kind of fits into that theme. People are speculating that, but again, there is no, you know, guarantee on that. And I feel like at the end here, they kind of put together a, a theory that kind of connects more to what we were talking about that maybe it is going to be more related to, I guess, money, as we've already mentioned. So this is a big post. I don't feel like it's worth going through it because it was posted, I think, before the most recent update. So it's not really going to hold a lot of info for us. But there is this post, however, instead, which we're going to look at, which is a lot of waifu and husbando and humanoid Pokemon are confirmed. So what are we referring to here with waifu? Well, just, you know, it's just a word for like, I don't even know how to say this, but this is going to sound just weird. Basically, people that consider certain characters you know to be more like well usually more feminine characters just kind of characters they would like to make in their wives people are weird the internet's weird don't question it either way and husbando is just the male version of it and the humanoid you already know what that means something that just looks more human pokemon are confirmed and he's been saying to us that are going to be about four of these pokemon like this so it is a bit strange right but here's basically what is being said. The devs always balance, and these are somewhat his interpretation of these new Pokemon. They almost definitely will be bipedal and gender-focused, but he that wouldn't have been bad until he said humanoid still. But basically, what is he talking about here? Well, he said, it is in the Waifu Mon League, when he was referring to, I think, Smolov in this case, but not the one I was about to tease in last month. So somebody asked, so there are two Waifu Pokemon, Small Evolution uh, and two whatever you teased last month. Is it not two, too many Waifus this time, lol? So basically, a lot of feminine-looking Pokemon that will be looking humanoid. And uh, again, he also did say there will be a bunch of Husbando, whatever you want to refer to that as. Basically, a bunch of Pokemon that will be more male looking, more, you know, like manly and humanoid in design. And he continues on saying, I trust Game Freak to make great Pokemon. I actually like some of the current uh, waifu mons and many bipedal Pokemon too. It's more of the Mr. Mime rhyme types that I personally don't enjoy. Luckily, Ku said there were at least four waifu Pokemon and less Husbandos than that. He listed the four he knows of. So somebody says here, you know, according to your tweet, I assume that Scarlet and Violet will have at least 110 plus new Pokemon, four f families of waifu Pokemon, four families of Husbandos, and two plus families of object Pokemon, region bird, fish, fossil, pseudo, etc. I called it 110 plus in Scarlet and Violet. Am I correct? He said, I never said four families of Husbandos. So it's not going to be four of them exactly, but there will be a few at least, uh, one or two at most, I'm guessing in this case. And at first I thought he meant they were all new Pokemon, but he never mentioned before, uh, before, but it turns out he meant they were all new, as in no regional forms of existing Pokemon. This was confirmed for me because of what he said about Sprigatito. There's a slight chance I'm wrong, but I don't know. Uh, because he did, you know, people were asking here, Ku said that the four waifu mons exist, not that, uh, those were the new waifu mons. Sprigatito, question mark, uh, Smolib, the regional form of the pole, and Serena. And then he says, no, they're all new. So no, it's not like, you know, that regional versions are going to be more looking like waifu Pokemon. No, they're all brand new Pokemon, apparently, which is 
kind of crazy. I mean, I'm really curious to see. This, this game seems to be going to hold a lot of them. Um, seems like there's going to be a lot of them. You know, a lot of them. But also, people are asking him, which are you going to go for? He said water, because I will go for grass first, you know, etc. Uh, I'm not going to read that word, but you guys get it. So, we continue on to the final part here, where he says, um, so, but, I think uh, that, as he confirms that one is related to the poll he held, one is of, uh, one of them is, so here are the four we think we know of. One, Sprihatito is going to be humanoid, according to this, and it's going to be the furry one. Possibly Smoliv, which is going to be a plant one. Uh, a weird lolly one, which I don't want to really know about that. It's hinted in the poll, and a hardcore queen-based Pokemon, something like that. Bonus, a lot of waifu trainers, uh, according to him, apparently, there'll be a lot of, like, trainers that just look like, you know, like, you know, anime girls, whatever. And uh, that's just an educated guess of uh, Sprigatito and Smolov, though. But that's pretty much it for everything to do with Ku right now. Uh, let's go over to something that's more 4chan related. So this is from Blaze Incineroar, who shared this uh, post that was on 4chan of a rumor where somebody's saying, like, you know, well, some stuff. But again, these are one of the ones where you have to be a little bit more, uh, you know, like, a little bit more cautious because it's not going to be most likely real. But let's see what it says, though. So, a pissed off translator here. Nintendo sucks and I hate my job right now. Well, there's not really a good way to kick things off here, isn't it? Uh, you guys want leaks? Obviously, I can't go into much details. New games uh, have their content split between groups for translation to make it easier to find and eliminate leakers. Even so, I think I might have quite a bit of information to share. So, feel free to ask if there's anything you'd like to know. So, base game content has already been cut to sell as DLC later. Eevee's ghost and bug type evolutions are part of the DLC content. Now... Again, instantly going into the EV thing, I'm going to be honest, I don't think there will be new evolutions. As much as I want it, as much as part of me at one point believed it was going to happen, I don't really feel it as much anymore. I don't feel like there's enough pointing towards that direction. I feel like the more likely thing is the thing that's been said by Ku, that we're going to get a Dunsparce evolution. I mean, he didn't even explicitly say it's going to be a Dunsparce Evo, but he did tell us something that Dunsparce is going to get some love. And I think that's an Evo. But it continues on. Lechonk evolves based on gender. Males pretty much just get bigger, but females turn into an Egyptian waifu Pokemon. That just doesn't seem likely, but uh, that bears little resemblance to the initial stage apart from the face. It might seem weird to some of you, but the male are quadruped and the females are biped. Uh, and they can still breed, which is interesting. Uh, kind of reminds me of that episode of like Rick and Morty when he's like, when Rick goes with Summer to like that planet where like all the males are basically like cavemen and the, the females have taken over and I don't know man just reminds me of that even either way evolutions for the starters were given to separate teams this time uh Vulcaman is what we got you can probably guess which one that is it's got a cartoonish skull mask as well as wings and frills that grow and light up when it, it's in battle uh but bears little resemblance to the leaks apart from the last bit nothing else uh, to my knowledge has been leaked correctly so far gotta hand it to game freak for running such a tight ship this time which i don't think is likely because again ku's been giving us way too much info that has so far seemingly been correct the main rival and professors are not villains despite what some might believe they're just different for the sake of it half of the past and future elements are just for decoration in these games the main villains have very little to do with the story since you can complete the open world in any order their missions have to be glorified uh, filler to work which is if true unfortunate in fact they don't even summon any legendary in this game surprisingly enough it's the main gimmick that's the villains of this game the professor sends you or your squad out to catch the legendaries and fix damages it's causing uh it's it's causing q force is what i think we're calling it right now users uh, typically have to wrist wristwatch type gadget they'll spin the tail on uh, of the letter Q, either backwards or forwards to activate it. Each one has a different effect that depends on the type of the four moves as they're dis at their disposal. So, the forward spin makes your Pokemon gain the resistance of a type, and the backward spin gains the gives them the stab bonus for it. They least uh, they, they least have four, wait, they last for five turns each. Either one can uh, be used once per battle, but not both. Right now, from the lore we've translated, it seems like Q power has to do with the types because of evolution. Each coverage move represents the type it once was, or it could be in the future. I'm going to be honest, mm, this is kind of a mid, very mid mid posts i'm not feeling this one i'm gonna be honest with you guys nothing about this screams like it would be realistic first of all the, the whole thing of kicking off saying that you're a pissed off translator just kind of gives it away straight away like why would you do it like this why would you say that if you're a pissed off translator and they notice at work that you just generally have been off they can pin you down my friend and if you are genuinely pissed off and then saying that you know you shouldn't be leaking stuff because they've been more tight about information well guess what you're you're doing the polar opposite right now so i'm gonna be honest this one doesn't seem likely also i'm gonna be honest this idea of um the q force and just just the q power and all that i'm not a big fan of it it just sounds kind of boring it just reminds me of z moves and how 
kind of lackluster they were in some way. And the whole thing about evolutions, though, big fan of that. Evolutions, brand new ones, I'll take it any day, any day time. I will gladly take it. But sweet mother of God, I do not want to see this ID he has right there. It could work, but it just not that fun. I feel like it could be more fun if there is changes in the Pokemon. I like Megas, okay? I think G-Max is cool because the Pokemon actually changes in design. Dynamax, just generally kind of a little bit eh, but I do like the changes in Pokemon designs and all that. That's why I like regional forms so much. So, personally, not a big fan of this. I do think this one is most likely fake. And I think for the most part, we've gone through everything that had to be covered here. As I already mentioned, there is like a lot here from like Soul Silver. He's been covering a lot of information, okay? A lot of stuff. And again, we could have gone through this post, but like I mentioned, uh, the fact that like we already have this other breakdown right like here as we already talked about like you know the post from jk here like because of his like information you know it's basically saying it's almost certain uh, that it's what has a head and tail but no body a coin with tapu koko's head uh you know being stage one slowpoke's tail for stage two and the tapu koko z move for stage three so i'm gonna be honest it makes sense right if you think about it you know what has, like, I guess, I guess in this case, right, Tapu Koko can turn itself into literally the head of a bird if it, like, merges together its body, right? Um, that's what it looks like, the head of a bird. So it's it's the head, you know, it's the head of the, you know, of this, ri of this riddle, of this, you know, little, like, joke, so to say. Then you have, of course, Slowpoke, which is with the tail, right? That's what it connects to there. That's what the riddle connects to there. It's the head and the tails, the head's tails. And then, of course, you know, the ending is... The Tapu Coco Tapu Tapunium Z, which is essentially hinting towards the coin itself in this case, I'm guessing, um, as we already mentioned from this lad. So, ladies and gents, what are your thoughts and opinions? Let me know in the comment section down below. That's going to be pretty much it. So, uh, yeah, guys, what do you think? He even responded down here. Somebody said, oh, I think you have it. He said to pay attention to the negative. Uh, Puppy didn't bring the Taponium Z, so he can't form the body for Garden of Alola. And then Zridlaku said, you could open a new account and switch respectable upstanding citizens send you a chinese proverb so yeah ladies and gents that's pretty much that and uh what do you all think about this let me know in the comment section down below i've got a call from my father so i'm gonna be doing that right now and uh, i will see you on the next video peace out bye bye ladies and gentlemen